Hello, Lauren here with Lauren Elizabeth Fine Art, and I help beginner through professional level artists reduce stress while mastering the art of animal art. In today's animal painting tutorial for stress relief, I'll be teaching you how to paint fur. This includes short haired animals, long fur, curly fur, tiger fur with markings, white dogs, black cats, so I'm going to be talking about all types of animal fur. So without further ado, let's get started. My absolute favorite brushes to use are by Master's Touch and they are flat brushes ranging from large to small, and then a round detail brush. I use these brushes quite often, and they're not super fancy, but they get the job done, and it really depends on how you use them. You don't necessarily need expensive brushes to create beautiful animal fur. All right, let's start with short-haired animals. So two examples are tabby cats and a German short-haired pointer dog. These are great examples of short haired animals. So you want to start off with a dark base. That's very important. Always start dark, work to a lighter color. So I start off with, I'm starting with a flat brush here. This is a small flat brush. I recommend that for short haired is to start with a small flat brush. And what I do first is I just pretty much fill in the base coat while I sort of start to add a little bit of texture of fur. When I say texture of fur is when I start to angle my brush so that it uses the flat edge of my flat brush to create that fur-like texture. So if I were painting around legs and noses and ears, I would start to add this on the outer edge of my sketch, okay? But the first step is just to fill it in with that dark tone. Now acrylics is all about layering, especially when it comes to animals. We don't do a ton of blending when it comes to animals. We're mostly layering. So all I do is add in my lighter tone to the dark mixture I was just using for my base. And I'm adding now my medium toned fur strands. Does this make sense? I am using the edge of my flat brush to start creating more of that texture over top my base. And I layer, I like to layer from bottom to top. As I layer, I am also mixing in to some of my brown, which we like. We want that to happen. We want a gradual progression of dark to light, not so extreme that it looks too sharp over top the dark colors. Now it's okay if your base is dried before you add this color. It's pretty often that this happens. So what I do to create that gradual progression is just to keep in adding a little bit more of my light tone into my dark mixture. So I'm going from dark to medium to light. With every new layer of fur that I add, I'm gonna get a little bit more strict with how I angle my brush. So I'm gonna angle it more vertically. I'm also going to add a little bit less pressure to make it more thin. I'm gonna add a little bit less paint to my brush so that I can create that real thin line. And I wanna be sure that it's not getting so sticky and dry on my canvas or paper. So I wanna often use my water, wash up my brush, get my brush damp and clean, and then apply a thin amount of paint back onto it so I can create those tiny thin strands of fur. Now if it gets, if it's too tricky for you to use a flat brush, you can always use what I'm using right now is a round detail brush. I find it a little bit more challenging to be efficient and to create those thin precise strands that are all equal in, in width because that's important. You also want to make sure these are equal in width and equal in length, the strands of fur. And I find that a little bit hard to do with a detail brush, but some artists find it a little bit easier. So there's an example of using a round brush. I'm going back now to my flat brush. This is a small flat brush. I'm using the same color I was just using for my detail brush. I find it just a little bit easier to get that right. Again, keeping my brush thin with paint, keeping my brush vertical on my paper or canvas is very important. Adding a very small amount of pressure on it compared to when I first started adding in strands of fur. 
Now, if this feels overwhelming and it's just a lot, I've actually included a bunch of notes from what we've gone over and what I will go over in this video linked down below so that you can download that, print it off and reference it when you're painting your own animal paintings. Now, this is something that you can learn from my mistakes here. But as I was layering from dark to light, I noticed that my brush strokes were a bit too thick. I was mentioning how you want to relieve off the pressure, you want to keep your brush thin with paint. I did that, but not enough. I should have added just a little bit less paint to my brush and more regularly gone back to my water, washed up my brush, and just made those strands of fur a little bit more refined, but thinner. All right. So I'm gonna demonstrate how to paint medium fur, medium haired animals. So two examples of this is a Siberian tiger or a Brittany Spaniel. It's that in between, not too short, not too long. I'm gonna use the same colors I just used in the first demonstration. So the only difference here is simply the length of the fur. I'm gonna repeat everything that I just did except I'm gonna make those strands of fur just a little bit longer than I did before. The other difference here, it's pretty much the same thing I was just talking about because I had mentioned at the beginning that you want to fill in the base color, but then sort of start on the outer edge of your sketch to start with that texture. Well, that texture is just gonna be a smidgen longer than what we just used for the short haired animal. So we want to go outside of our sketch the very beginning. That's really the only place that we're putting that texture is on the outside of our sketch. The inside we're filling in, the outside we're just laying that down. And once I have my darker base down, that's when I gradually progress, adding in some of my lighter tone into my dark tone. That's how I paint. I like to just add in more lights to the color I was just using for my base. And then I get a little bit more precise with those strands of fur. I add a little bit less pressure to my brush. I also work from bottom up. If you're not sure about what colors to use for the specific animal that you're painting, I've created a few videos about this and I'll link them down below just to help guide you in mixing and placing colors. So I added just a little bit of white to the color I was just mixing for my medium tones. And I also could definitely make use of that water to my left. I could wash my brush out and make it a little bit thinner. Those layers over top really require very little paint and washing your brush regularly so that you can keep those strands thin. I'm again going to demonstrate how you paint this with a round detail brush same color just kind of mixed up more of it it's also challenging to paint those final layers over top with this brush because you constantly have to go back to your paint these round brushes don't hold as much paint as flat brushes do but if you're at the very end in your detail phase these brushes can come in real handy when you're trying to add those final details maybe strands of fur maybe whiskers that are just really obvious but really tiny and detailed they can be helpful but definitely cumbersome and they can take a little while because of how often you have to go back to your paint all right next is a long furred animal this includes a highland cow a golden retriever a german shepherd a samoy dog these are all examples of long-haired animals hands down the best tool for this is a large flat brush Absolutely, it makes your life so much easier to use a large, thin-edged flat brush. And right now I'm just laying down the base and making sure that if I were to be painting outside my sketch, I'm gonna start creating a little bit of that texture. The nice thing about using this brush is that you don't have to pull those strands of fur down too much because it's already being created by the length of your thin, the thin edge of your brush and you see how I'm able to push that down on both sides so that it's thin. As I'm layering from dark to light, because I just added a little bit of my light tone there, 
I keep my brush thin and this brush just makes it easy to do that because it's just naturally the perfect length and it stays thin as long as I'm pushing it down on the top and the bottom of it. Again, you wanna work from bottom up where you're working at those bottom layers and you just kind of work your way up. I am gradually adding in more of my light tones of yellow ochre and white to lighten those strands up. I just really want to stress this point, use that water to your advantage. Definitely keep that brush thin with paint so that you can get those strands of fur on the very top layers the most precise and so it doesn't become so clumpy. All right, let's move on to curly haired animals. Examples of this is a cocker spaniel, a cockapoo, llamas, animals with curly or kinky thick fur. I'm gonna go a little bit darker here. No reason, Just I just wanna change up the colors a bit. I create a darker base than the curls that I plan to paint. And the outer edge of our drawing should actually start to be that curly fur. I'll show you this in just a bit. It's just twisting my brush and moving my brush at an angle using that flat edge. So wherever you have legs or arms or ears, you're gonna start this curly fur just by kind of moving your brush in different directions. Curls will go to the left, to the right, they'll go all over, but oftentimes they're still pointing down. Like with the other fur I demonstrated, we're just gonna add another layer with a lighter tone. For this type of fur, I recommend using a small or medium flat brush. It's very difficult, almost impossible to do with a large flat brush because of the length of the brush. But this helps us to get those folded in curls and we can just cluster them over top one another so it really looks like thick curly fur. If you notice, I'm adding a little bit more pressure to my brush. I'm being looser with my brush strokes, curly fur. It's actually, if you make mistakes, it's a little easy to fix because of how all the different strands of fur go in all different directions. They're all face down, but they are kind of going left, some are going right. It, it's a little bit easier to um, be looser with your brush strokes here, not so perfect. But of course, as you layer uh, lighter tones over top, you're gonna get a little bit more precise about how you do that. And that's leading to my next point. As you layer those strands over top with your lighter tone, you want to both go over strands of fur that you already painted and create new ones, okay? You want to see the bottom base shining through. The goal of this is not to have it just cover over all of that. All right, let's move on to clumpy fur. Examples of this are wolves, definitely have this, and Yorkies. A little bit even more clumpy would be Bergamasco dogs. They have almost dreadlocks for fur. Now, as I finish up painting this base coat, can you tell what I did wrong? I didn't start making that texture a little bit on the outside. So I mentioned when you're doing this base, on the outside of your sketch, depending on the type of fur your animal has, you wanna kinda of start making that texture just a little bit as you put down that base. Not a whole lot, just a little. So if I were painting the back of a wolf, like right on the back of its neck, this is kinda of what the fur would look like. I would oftentimes start at the base of the animal, start on the skin of the animal, and then pull my brush strokes out and I would try to cluster them together, making them kind of more clumpy in some areas, but then a little bit more spread out in others. So you can just see clumps of fur. And then I'm also trying to not fill in all the base color, but I'm going over a lot of it. But you can still see the separation of clumps of fur. Now this is really important and it goes for pretty much all fur. The fur on the outside closest to the outs of the dog is gonna be the lightest and at the tip of those fur strands are gonna get the most light. But the root of the fur, wherever those strands are at the root, that's gonna be the darkest area. 
So as I layer my light tones, I'm gonna try and get focus on the tips of those strands of fur, not the root. I wanna keep that dark. I also wanna note that I am trying to create little defined fur strands within each clump. Okay, so I do this with a thin amount of paint, uh, less pressure on my brush. I wanna keep using my water so that I can keep that, that brush clean and not sticky with dried paint. And I want to just focus on one little clump of fur at a time. All right, let's move on to tiger fur with markings. So we're basically doing a Siberian tiger here, applying a lot of what I just taught you when it comes to painting fur. So step number one when it comes to painting the markings of a tiger is I would lay down that black, or you can mix a burnt umber too, I would lay down the markings first. So those stripes I'd paint in first after my sketch. Then I would go on to thoroughly washing on my brush so there's absolutely no black left on my brush. And then I would go in with the dark tone of the color in between those stripes. So I could use raw sienna with burnt umber. I could also use burnt umber with orange. I could just use raw sienna. It is, there is a wide range of colors that we could use for different animals. You don't have to use all the same colors. I'm just using raw sienna for the base and I'm just gonna paint around those stripes now. Probably recommend you let those black stripes dry, but for this demonstration, I was going a little bit faster so that you could see each one individually. But what you would do with this color is you would start to cut into some of that black to make that texture of fur. Because if you look really closely at a Siberian tiger, there are some of the lighter strands of that tannish orange cutting in over top those black stripes. So even if it looks a little translucent, that's okay because eventually at the very last step, we'll go back with our black and start then cutting in to the orange area or this tannish area. But before I do that, I wanna create a lighter tone because we still wanna layer here like we did in the last uh, little demonstrations. And so in between those stripes, I'm gonna layer that lighter color uh, over top the areas in between those stripes. Still again, cutting into my black. And then after that, I go back to my black and then kind of further define those areas. So I then cut into that orange area and make it really look more realistic that way. Wonderful, okay, so let's move on to how we would paint white fur. So this is a white cat or a Samoyed dog. I'm using a large flat brush and I'm gonna start with a medium gray, so not a dark gray here. If you have a white animal, you're, you don't wanna start out with a dark base. You wanna kinda of start with a medium tone base. It'll just be too extreme if it's too dark. So I'm gonna create a medium gray using white and black. You wanna lay down your base and then have that outer edge start to your fur. And now I'm gonna add in more white to that gray. So with a white animal, you always just wanna keep adding in white to the color that you were just previously using. You're just slowly building up in color. So using my long flat brush, I'm just gonna layer over top that. It really helps if it's wet. It's not a big deal if it's dry, just make sure you gradually build up in color and you're not jumping so quickly. And you can see that it blends very nicely on my wet paint of gray. And as it dries, because acrylics dry so fast, I can just very easily layer from a medium gray to straight white where I'm, I'm just using white. Now I'm kind of showing you animals with long white fur, like a Samoy dog I mentioned, or a long fur Persian cat, that kind of thing. But the examples that I showed you about curly fur, maybe you have a white curly haired dog, or maybe you have a short white haired dog. Use those brushes that I was demonstrating with that, but build up from a medium gray to a white.
All right, so here is where I go in with just white. I build up to where I'm just using white and very carefully going over each strand, but also creating some more while still leaving a base shining through from the bottom. All right, let's move on to black fur. Now this is a little different because we want to just start with black. Our darkest tones here are straight black, nothing in it. And I'm using a flat brush to demonstrate this, but of course, if you have a short haired black animal, then you would do it according to the short fur tutorial that I showed. So how you do this is you would just continue adding your light tone in here, uh, most commonly your white but you don't want to let build up too much with white. Your goal here is not to build up to where you're just using white like the last one. Your goal is just to get to almost a dark to medium gray, but not too gray because you're not painting a gray animal, you're painting a black animal. So tips for that is one, paint sections of your animal while it's wet, and two, don't build up with so much white. So you really just wanna gradually progress with your white. See here, I kinda of went a little too white, but I tried to blend that in to my wet paint that I had down. You're really not adding a whole lot of layers to black animals because again, you're trying to keep that black and not gray. All right, so the last one I'm gonna demonstrate are animals with odd markings. What I mean by this is that colors are sporadically placed on their fur. Examples of this are Australian shepherds, dogs that have brindle markings like pit bulls, or German shepherds or Frenchies or bulldogs. Sometimes they can have this kind of marking on them. So you would start with a darker base of black or and or burnt umber or burnt sienna, maybe even some raw sienna's in there. You would thoroughly wash out your brush for the next layer after you applied your base and that fur. And you would only place that fur in certain areas. So you don't have to get it in the exact areas that you see on the reference photo but you want to make sure these are sporadically placed and gradually uh, lightened up so they shouldn't be too light compared to the base that you put. And you want to make sure that these are in clusters. So sometimes they're a little bit more spread out, sometimes they're more closely placed together. Now, of course, the colors that you choose to lighten up your paint is gonna depend on the color dog and the, of the colors of the markings that it has. And I just wanna note, this doesn't just include dogs, this can include other animals. But there's a lot of dogs with kind of this type of marking, so that's why I keep bringing that up. But as you layer your colors, you again want to both lay those lighter tones over top the strands that you just laid down while also making some more. And you don't have to add too many of that lighter color you just have to add them to the areas closer to the light source. Phew, that was a lot of information. Too much, I would say, which is why I've added a list of notes that you can print off and download for yourself, link down below guys. So if you want to really hold on to this information and practice the correct techniques, check out what I've linked down below that you can just print off. Now guys, if there's one thing that you can take away from this video, it's practice the correct techniques. Practice doesn't make perfect if you're not practicing the right techniques that will help you grow as an artist. So if you ever want to practice these same techniques that I just went over, especially when it comes to painting your pet or wildlife, I have an online animal art masterclass for creatives of all levels linked down below. But guys, thanks so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Bye.